Hello. It is Tuesday, November 15th, 2022. I'm Chris Primo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It being a Tuesday puzzle today, it shouldn't be a particularly challenging crossword, which is good because I don't have a huge amount of time today, should not under a massive time constraint, but um, would like to solve this relatively briskly, and that is indeed what should what should be perfectly possible on a Tuesday. So this relatively brisk edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Joe Percy, Jake Rodkin, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the indomitable Shullmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign for their generous support in sustaining this channel, making this whole enterprise sustainable for me. I do very much appreciate that. And if you'd like to join the ranks as a benefactor and get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash dailysolve or in a link in the description field underneath the video, of course. And that very same link will allow you to become a patron at any tier of the Patreon, for which you will receive all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So thank you to everybody who has done that. I appreciate uh, everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any time for any amount, and it is really what keeps this thing going. So thank you. Do also subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've not done so, and also look in that same description field for a link to join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. Um, you do get an extra channel if you're a Patreon subscriber, but other than that, it's uh, free for anybody to join the Discord. And um, and that's that. So let's get on to the puzzle. This is, as noted, a Tuesday puzzle. It was constructed by Sandy Ganzel, or Ganzel, not sure. Um, this is Sandy's second puzzle for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. The Almond Brother Who Married Cher. Oh, uh, I don't... <laughs> I, I know there is a Greg Almon. I don't know if that's the Almond Who Married Cher. I don't remember any other Almond Brother names, but I know that Greg has two Gs, like the baker. Uh, let's see. Alum. A grad, a graduate of a school. There we go. Okay, so maybe it is, maybe hopefully it was Greg, uh, which is good. Because as I say, I don't remember the <laughs> any others. Realtor speak for move, a relo, a relocation. And alma mater for Aldous Huxley and George Orwell. They, well, based, I don't remember if I knew this or not, but they must have gone to Eton, the, the sort of legendary um, private preparatory school uh, here in England that at which many prime ministers have been educated. Okay, to fix as shoelaces is to retie. And something up overhead is a loft bird, for instance. Marketer's suggestion for the holidays. Gift something? Gift wrap? I don't know why that would be the case. Turn to others for assistance is to get help. There we go. Just chill. Don't don't have a cow with that H? Don't know. I mean, it could be. It's perfectly plausible, but I, I, there, there could be something else I'm not thinking of. So let's look at the crosses. Greek war god Ares. It's a Greek war god. So there we go. Maybe it is don't have at the very least. Something good to have on hand for cold weather. On hand, literally on your hand would be a glove. And we can interpret this in that punny sort of way. In fact, we should interpret it as such because of the question mark indicating a bit of punnery or wordplay going on in this clue. So um, something good to have on hand, to literally have on your hand. What Jupiter and Saturn are made of? Uh, gas, of course. Yes, gas giants. Um, on fire. Lit, I suppose. Something's lit, it's on fire. Ode to a Nightingale, Keats' poem, the ode, the official uh, poetic form of the New York Times crossword. And an assistant would be an aid. Power source for old locomotives, of course, classic. Uh, locomotives were steam trains, steam steam locomotives. Okay, I suspect this is don't have a cow. So let's look at the downs. Prompted in a play, yes, cued. So that's my cue, that's my line. I was cued to go on stage. And a loose-fitting Hawaiian dress is a muumuu, spelled in this manner. Probably the highest, I would guess, the highest 
concentration of use in any English language word, perhaps? I don't know. I mean, I say that because two-thirds, 66% of the letters in this word are use, and I can't imagine that's very common. Apple storage service beginning in 2011. Well, that would be iCloud. I know because I pay it a couple of pounds every month. Uh, please demonstrate is show me. And ain't in other words is not. So ain't in other words is simply a way of saying is not. He ain't, he is not. Group that may stand on risers. Oh, it, oh, whoops, what did I do? What is this? Show me, what did I, yeah, sorry. Let's mistype that blatantly. So, okay, does that help? Group that may stand on risers. What's a group? So it probably ends with an S. No, it doesn't. Audition without is try out. So try out for a band, say audition for the band. So, oh, a choir, right. So choir may stand on risers such that the um, the, the different ranks of the of the group are standing at, at graduated elevations, so you can see the people in back. Okay, word with change or spill, an oil change or oil spill, there we go. And sooner than soon would be now, right this instant. Humble as a manger, a lowly manger, so that I suppose is, I guess that's probably a biblical reference, a humble manger. Okay, the nativity story. And then like brand new tires would be un worn they have not yet been worn down by the road maybe let's check these crosses places of paradise could be edens of course another biblical reference and patriotic world cup chant could be usa usa um so hmm where was i you might ask yourself and what an adjective modifies an adjective of course modifies a noun as opposed to an adverb uh, so old dagger i think a snee is an old dagger. I think that's a sort of archaic term referring to some old sort of dagger. Carol words were, oh, Carol, this is, that's interesting. There seems to be a repeated biblical reference, in, in, particularly in this sort of edge of the grid. Let's see. So what is this? Carol words before born is the king of Israel. I guess the Carol itself isn't biblical. Carol words before born is the king of Israel. Um, Noel, Noel, right? I had to actually think of it in my head. I couldn't jump straight to it. Okay, so that's the that's the Christmas Carol. And oh, sorry, which one am I looking at here? Hip hop dance move popular in the 2010s. The Nay Nay that, that does occasionally come up in the New York Times crossword because look at that incredibly useful collection of common vowels and a common consonant. Irresistible. So, oh, and sorry, this was also, oh, this is one of the, this is one of the theme answers that's being pointed to by 56 across the revealer. Let's take a look at that. Oh, right. Okay. This will be old McDonald's, old McDonald had a farm, right? So because we have nay, nay, moo, moo. So these are actually, these are actually animal sounds. They're not spelled in the manner in which we ordinarily spell the sounds various farm animals make, but they are homophonic with them. They sound the same. So I bet this refrain will be E-I-E-I-O, which is, of course, the uh, old McDonald's. Well, I don't know. I guess it's not actually what old McDonald himself sings. It's what the narrator describing old McDonald sings. E-I-E-I-O. Okay. So, uh, so 51, this is the children's song. So that would be old McDonald. There we go. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. I wonder if this is the proper order. I, I haven't a clue what the sort of proper order of animals is, but I guess it would start it on that farm. He had a cow. Uh, that farm he had a cow, E-I-E-I-O, with a moo-moo. That's right, yes. <laughs> Boy, I haven't thought about this song in more years than I can remember, with a moo-moo here and a moo-moo there, here a moo there, a moo everywhere, a moo-moo. So there we go. And we'll, we'll carry that on with Nene for the horse and... What is this? A rum-soaked cake is a baba, rum baba. So that is the sheep uh, with a baba here and a baba there. All right. UK-based financial giant is uh, HSBC, the uh, Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation, I believe, and convened to strategize on the football field is to huddle, to have a huddle with your uh, teammates. 
Okay. Oh, a marketer's suggestion for the holidays is a gift idea, right? We're referring to the concept of a suggestion as opposed to a concrete example of one of those, of what that suggestion might be. So there we go. That's why I wasn't on track there. And here we have French suffix with uh, jardin, which would be hier. So jardinier would be a, uh, a gardener. And uh, jardin would be garden. So there we go. All right. That's a bit more. That's I would say that's maybe slightly ad more advanced for a foreign language clue than I would expect on a Tuesday, personally. But let me know how you, how you managed with that one. I guess by the time I saw it, it was already... Um, filled in. So that'll probably be true, be true for, for many people. Some moving rentals. U-Haul is a, is a, um, a sort of truck rental company. So there we go. Singer Gibson or Harry? Well, there's Debbie Harry, Debbie Gibson. Don't know that I can place that right off the top of my head, but it must be the answer. And game fish whose face resembles that of a herd animal. Yeah, right. So sheep something. Oh, right. And actually, that's also being pointed to by the revealer. So, oh, so the animals have to be, I didn't realize, right? So the animals have to be pointed out as well. Oh, okay. So that's, I see. Don't have a cow, a sheep, and then this will be a horse, of course. Okay. Horse, a horse, of course, of course. And then a capital of the Yukon is, oh, it's something horse, right? This is one of those things I, I vaguely know, but can't, can't remember. City north by northwest of Oklahoma City, yeah. Um, Enid, I think, is a city, so probably that. And blank scout cookies, girl scout cookies. There we go. Blank chicken, Chicago-based restaurant chain. I don't know that I know this. I mean, it looks like it might be Harold's, which I don't. I don't recognize that. I've actually never been to Chicago. Um, I don't know if they're if they they, they they probably exist outside of Chicago as well, but I just don't recognize this. Heralds, maybe. Rank between Sarge and Kappen. So here we go. Here we have two contractions of uh, military ranks, sergeant and captain, of course. So I think this will be a lieutenant or a Louis, I think is probably what this will be. And the best of the best would be A1, absolute top. Speech therapist's concern could be a lisp. You could um, work on ameliorating your, ameliorating your lisp with a speech therapist and an, an off ingredient um, is off a, is that an insecticide or, or maybe not a, no, not an insecticide so much as a insect repellent, I suppose. And then slow on the uptake is dense, is DEET something? That sort of sounds like something that I think is related to bug repellent. Got some, yes, got some shut eye is slept and there we go. Okay. So that is correct. What next? Nowhere to be found colloquially. So this could be a wall away without official leave, which has come up in the crossword a few times. Uh, military jargon. And then treble symbol is the G clef. So on a musical staff, on a, on music, on a musical score, um, you could have that sort of squiggly tall symbol that sort of looks a bit like, I guess it kind of looks like a, maybe a backwards ampersand and it's the G clef and it indicates that you're playing in the treble note range, the sort of higher common note range. It's the higher of the two that you would be playing on the piano, for instance, but um, also other other instruments use it. Okay. Hole punching tool would be an all, a W L. And actress Saldana of Avatar. You know, I've actually never seen Avatar. Speaking of films I've never seen, I've never seen Avatar, but I know that Zoe Saldana is an, is an actor, so um, she must have been in that, and that is uh, who this is. So to astonish is to amaze. And here we have a pointy-eared magical creature, an elf. Another film I've never seen. Don't tell anyone. Uh, married woman in Madrid is Senora. And maternity, maternity ward uh, in a hospital. A white horse. Is, is white horse the capital of the Utah, Yukon? That does sound familiar. Okay, great. So I think that's the answer. And then... Um, Peshaw could be Ba, maybe. So Peshaw is sort of, it's kind of a, a dismissal. Psha, that can't be true. Ba, that can't be true. I mean, they sort of work. Uh, the Book of Eli, 2010 Denzel Washington film, another film I've not seen. Not a good day for films I've seen in the crossword. 1980s sitcom E.T. Well, I have seen the film E.T. <laughs> um, 
And I think I've seen at least one or two episodes of the sitcom ALF, which, uh, to which this answer refers um, back when it was, I don't know. I don't know, either airing or re- reruns. I don't even know. Toward the back of a ship would be aft towards the back of a ship. Sorry, and I should explain this. So 1980s sitcom E.T. So E.T. here stands for extraterrestrial and ALF was the title character of a 1980s American sitcom featuring an extraterrestrial character, ALF, which I think in turn stood for alien life form. And he was a sort of, I think, a puppet based character. Okay, so, so here's Sheep's Bead. Okay, I don't recognize this. So good thing we got it with crosses. And a feminine name that's also a tropical jungle vine. It's a Liara, I want to say, or Liana. It's one of those two. It, it's definitely Lia something. Am I confusing it? With, am I sort of mixing up in my head with a sort of lasso, word for lasso? Consecrate, in a way, is anoint. So to anoint somebody, to consecrate them or bless them. Okay, to recede is to ebb as in the tide of the ocean, and anger is ire. I think that was in the crossword yesterday, potentially. Dog blank dog, vicious. Dog eats dog. You could describe a situation or even the entire world as a dog eat dog world, a vicious world. And healthful husks in cereal or muffins are brands. Yes, you can have a bran muffin or bran flake cereal. The Rose Singer Midler, uh, uh, Bette Midler, the great Bette Midler. And win-win is no-lose. There we go. So it is Liana. Okay, great. And no, 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 no. Got something wrong. What did I do? I don't know if it was a mistake or, or um, well, I don't know if it was a typo or a genuine mistake, I guess is what I'm saying. Let's run through this. I'll cut if it takes too much time. Maybe, maybe sheep's bead is sheep's head and pshaw is ha. Because... It does, sheep's bead does sound sort of weird. And sheep's head is definitely the kind of thing because its face resembles that of a herd animal. Sheep's head. That must be right. It was. Okay. That was a silly mistake. <laughs> um, yeah, a couple of things in this puzzle that were that were surprising for maybe slightly for a Tuesday puzzle. Although this is one that I should have gotten if I just thought about it for more than three seconds sheep's head I yeah I should have I should have been more wary about putting Pasha straight into the into the puzzle um but there we have it so let's let's look at our theme our old McDonald children's song theme uh, of course the refrain e-i-e-i-o and our various animals a cow a sheep and a horse and the sounds they make moo moo ba ba and nay nay I I really appreciate the um conscientiousness in getting the, the doubled sound in here, uh, finding finding words that themselves that don't need to be uh, modified in order, don't need to be modified or repeated in order to serve as the repeated sound. I mean, each of these is a, a word or a phrase unto itself. So moo moo, ba ba, and nay nay. That's, that's, that was well done. Well done with that. I, that must, that was probably the seed of the idea for this, I would suspect. Um, and then cow, Cow, sheep, and horse are sort of just buried in phrases. Those are a bit less um, sort of perfect in that regard, but I think the animal sounds are, are what really, that's the standout element of this theme. Well done. And then, of course, E-I-E-I-O is just straight in there as part of the revealer. The And when I say revealer, I mean the, in this case, I suppose we sort of have two revealers. We have E-I-E-I-O and Old MacDonald, the two in this case, the sort of compound revealer, the clues that explain what's going on with the rest of the theme. And there we have it, a nice puzzle by Sandy Ganzel. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. In fact, I don't think there were any corrections from yesterday's puzzle. So um, so that's that. There was, there was one comment that I did save that uh, I was hoping there would be an opportunity to deploy this, uh, this, uh, comment in the puzzle today, but there wasn't. So I'll just mention it now and I'll try to remember to um, bring it up again in the future. Sam, aka Frisco17, commented, Indie crossword constructor Kiera Vasquez coined a word for the clues with exclamation points, but no quotes that I like. Bangits. Use that if you like. I will try to remember to use that. A bangit is a is one of these um the, the problem is there isn't an example here, so I can't I can't explain it. So but it's those clues 
that just that have an exclamation point but are not in quotation marks. And so, if you if you solve enough of these crosswords, you know the words, you know the kind of thing I mean. And I'll try to remember to bring it up next time that occurs. All right, that's that for today's Tuesday puzzle. I'll be back, of course, tomorrow for the Wednesday. Hope you join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. 